Chapter Twenty Eight of Parables from Nature. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bill Mosley. Parables from Nature by Margaret Gaddy. Chapter Twenty Eight Cobwebs. I cannot make this matter plain, but I would shoot, howe'er in vain, a random arrow from the brain. Tennyson Twinette the spider was young, hungry, and industrious. Weave yourself a web, my dear, said her mother, as you know how without teaching, and catch flies for yourself. Only don't weave near me in the corner here. I am old and stay in the corners. But you are young and needn't. Besides, you would be in my way. Scramble along the rafters to a little distance off and spin. But mind, just see there's nothing there. Below you, I mean, before you begin. You won't catch anything to eat if there isn't empty space about you for the flies to fly in. Toinette was dutiful and obeyed. She scrambled along the woodwork of the growing roof of the church, for it was there her mother lived, till she had gone what she thought might fairly be called a little distance off, and then she stopped to look round, which, considering that she had eight eyes to do it with, was not difficult, but she was not so sure of what there might be below. I wonder whether mother would say there was nothing here, below me, I mean, but empty space for flies to fly in, said she. But she might have stood wondering there forever. So she went back to her mother and asked what she thought. Oh, dear, oh, dear, said her mother. How can I think about what I don't see? There usen't to be anything there in my young days, I'm sure. But everybody must find out things for themselves. Let yourself down by the family rope, as you know how, without teaching, and see for yourself if there's anything there or not. Toinette was a very intelligent young spider, quite worthy of the age she was born in. So she thanked her mother for her advice, and was just starting afresh when another thought struck her. How shall I know if there's anything there when I get there? asked she. Dear me, if there's anything there, how can you help seeing it? cried the mother, rather teased by her daughter's inquiring spirit. You with at least eight eyes in your head. Thank you. Now I quite understand, said Toinette, and scuttling back to the end of the rafter, she began to prepare for the family rope. It was the most exquisite thing in the world. So fine, you could scarcely see it. So elastic, it could be blown about without breaking. Such a perfect gray that it looked white against black things, and black against white. So manageable that Toinette could both make it and slide down it at once, and when she wished to get back, could slip up by it and roll it up at the same time. It was a wonderful rope for anybody to make without teaching. But Toinette was not conceited. Rope-making came as natural to her as eating and fighting do to intelligent little boys. So she thought no more about it than we do of chewing our food. How she did it is another question, and not one easily answered, however intelligent we may be. Thus much may be hinted. Out of four little spinning machines near the tail came four little threads, and the rope was a four-twist of these. But as each separate thread was itself a mini-twist of a great many others still finer, 
I do not pretend to tell the number of strands, as rope threads are called, in Twinette's family rope. Enough that, as she made it now, it has been made from generation to generation, and there seems to be no immediate prospect of a change. The plan was for the spinner to glue the ends to the rafter and then start off. Then out came the threads from the spinning machines, and twist went the rope, and the further the spinner traveled, the longer the rope became. Antoinette made ready accordingly, and turning on her back, let herself fairly off. The glued ends held fast, the four strands twined closely together, and down went the family rope, with Twinette at the end guiding it. Down into the middle of the chancel, where there were carved oaken screens on three sides, and carved oaken seats below, with carved oaken figures at each end of each. Twinette was about halfway down to the stone-flagged floor, when she shut up the spinning machines and stopped to rest and look round, then balancing herself at the end of her rope, with her legs crumpled up round her, she made her remarks. "'This is charming!' cried she. "'One had need to travel and see the world, and all so nice in the middle here, nice empty space for the flies to fly about in, and a very pleasant time they must have of it. Dear me, how hungry I feel! I must go back and weave at once.' But just as she was preparing to roll up the rope and be off, a ray of sunshine, streaming through one of the chancel windows, struck in a direct line upon her suspended body, quite startling her with the dazzle of its brightness. Everything seemed in a blaze all around her, and she turned round and round in terror. "'Oh, dear! Oh, dear! Oh, dear!' cried she for she didn't know what to say, and still couldn't help calling out. Then, making a great effort, she gave one hearty spring, and, blinded though she was, shot up to the growing roof as fast as Spider could go, rolling the rope into a ball as she went, after which she stopped to complain. But it is dull work complaining to oneself so she ran back to her mother in the corner. "'Back again so soon, my dear?' asked the old lady, not over-pleased at the fresh disturbance. "'Back again at all is the wonder,' whimpered Twinette. "'There's something down there, after all, besides empty space.' "'Why, what did you see?' asked her mother. "'Nothing. That was just it,' answered Twinette. I could see nothing for Dazzle and Blaze, but I did see Dazzle and Blaze. Young people of the present day are very troublesome with their observations, remarked the mother. However, if one rule will not do, here is another. Did Dazzle and Blaze shove you out of your place, my dear? Toinette said, Certainly not. She had come away of herself. Then how could they be anything? asked her mother. Two things could not be in one place at the same time. Let Toinette try to get into her place while she was there herself and see if she could. Toinette did not try because she knew she couldn't. But she sat very silent, wondering what Dazzle and Blaze could be if they were nothing at all a puzzle which might have lasted her for ever. Fortunately, her mother interrupted her by advising her to go and get something to do. She really couldn't afford to feed her out of her web any longer, she said. If Dazzle and Blaze kill me, you'll be sorry, mother, said Twinette in a pet. Nonsense about Dazzle and Blaze, cried the old spider, now thoroughly aroused. I dare say they're only a little more light than usual. 
there's more or less light up here in the corners even at times you talk nonsense my dear so Toinette scuttled off in silence for she dared not ask what light was though she wanted to know but she felt too cross to begin to spin she preferred a search after truth to her dinner which showed she was no commonplace spider so she resolved to go down below in another place and see if she could find a really empty space and accordingly prepared the family rope when she came down it was about a half a foot further east in the chancel and a very prosperous journey she made come all safe so far said she her good humor returning i do believe i found nothing at last how jolly it is as she spoke she hung dangling at the end of her rope back downwards her legs tucked up round her as before in perfect enjoyment when suddenly the south door of the church was thrown open and a strong gust set in it was a windy evening and the draught that poured into the chancel blew the family rope with toinette at the end of it backwards and forwards through the air till she turned quite giddy oh dear oh dear cried she puffing what shall i do how could they say there was nothing here oh dear but empty space for flies oh dear to fly in but at last in despair she made an effort of resistance and in the very teeth of the wind succeeded in coiling up the family rope and so got back to the rafter it was a piece of rare good fortune for her that a lazy half alive fly happened to be creeping along it just at the moment as she landed from her air dive she pounced on the stroller killed him and sucked his juices before he knew where he was as people say then throwing down his carcass she scrambled back to her mother and told her what she thought though not in plain words for what she thought was that the old lady didn't know what she was saying when she talked about empty space with nothing in it dazzle and blaze were nothing cried she at last though they blinded me because they and i were in one place together which couldn't be if they had been anything and now this is nothing though it blows me out of my place twenty times in a minute because i can't see it what's the use of rules one can't go by mother i don't believe you know a quarter of what's down below there the old spider's head turned as giddy with toinette's arguments as toinette's had done while swinging in the wind i don't see what it can matter what's there whimpered she if there's room for flies to fly about in i wish you'd go back and spin that's another part of the question remarked toinette in answer to the first half of her mother's sentence in answer to the second she scuttled back to the rafter intending to be obedient and spin but she dawdled and thought and thought and dawdled till the day was nearly over i will take one more turn down below said she to herself at last and look round me again and so she did but went further down than before then stopped to rest as usual presently as she hung dangling in the air by her line she grew venturesome i will sift the matter to the bottom thought she i will see how far empty space goes so saying she reopened her spinning machines and started afresh it was a wonderful rope certainly or it would not have gone on to such a length without breaking in a few seconds toinette was on the cold stone pavement but she didn't like the feel of it at all so took to running as fast as she could go and luckily 
met with a step of woodwork on one side. Up this she hurried at once, and crept into a corner close by, where she stopped to take a breath. "'One doesn't know what to expect in such queer outlandish places,' observed she. "'When I've rested, I'll go back, but I must wait till I can see a little better.' Seeing a little better was out of the question, however, for night was coming on, and when weary of waiting, she stepped out of her hiding-place to look round. The whole church was in darkness. Now it is one thing to be snug in bed when it is dark, and another to be a long way from home and have lost your way, and not know what may happen to you next minute. Toinette had often been in the dark corner with her mother, and thought nothing of it. Now she shook all over with fright, and wondered what dreadful thing darkness could be. Then she thought of her mother's rules, and felt quite angry. "'I can't see anything, and I don't feel anything,' murmured she. "'And yet here's something that frightens me out of my wits.' At last her very fright made her bold. She felt about for the family rope. It was there, safe and sound, and she made a spring. Roll went the rope, and up went the owner, higher, 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 through the dark night air, seeing nothing, hearing nothing, feeling nothing but the desperate fear within. By the time she touched the rafter, she was half exhausted, and as soon as she was safely landed upon it, she fell asleep. It must have been late next morning when she woke, for the sound of organ music was pealing through the church and the air vibration swept pleasantly over her frame, rising and falling like gusts of wind, swelling and sinking like waves of the sea, gathering and dispersing like vapors of the sky. She went down by the family rope to observe, but nothing was to be seen to account for her sensations. Fresh ones, however, stole round her, as she hung suspended, for it was a harvest festival, and large white lilies were grouped with evergreens round the slender pillars of the screens, and filled the air with their powerful odor. Still nothing disturbed her from her place. Sunshine streamed in through the windows. She even felt it warm on her body, but it interfered with nothing else, and meanwhile in such sort as spiders hear, she heard music and prayer. Whether as music and prayer come to us, or as deaf men enjoy sound by touch, let those say who can. A door opened, and a breeze caught her rope, but still she held fast. So music and prayer and sunshine and breeze and scent were all there together, and Toinette was among them, and saw flies flying about overhead. This was enough. She went back to the rafter, chose a home, and began to spin. Before evening her web was completed, and her first prey caught and feasted on. Then she cleared the remains out of her chamber, and sat down in state to think. For Toinette was now a philosopher. It came to her while she was spinning her web. As she crossed and twisted her threads, her ideas grew clearer and clearer, or she fancied so, which did almost as well. Each line she fastened brought its own reflection, and this was the way they went on. Empty space is an old wife's tale. She fixed that very tight. Sight and touch are very imperfect guides. This crossed the other at an angle. Two or three things can easily be in one place at the very same time. This seemed very loose, till she tightened it by a second. Sunshine and wind and scent and sound don't drive each other out of their places. 
that held firm when one has sensations there is something to cause them whether one sees it or feels it or finds it out or not this was a wonderful thread it went right round the web and was fastened down in several places light and darkness and sunshine and wind and sound and sensation and fright and pleasure don't keep away flies the little interlacing threads looked quite pretty as she placed them how many things i know of that i don't know much about the web got thicker every minute and perhaps there may be ever so much more beyond ever so much more ever so much more beyond those were her very last words she kept repeating them till she finished her web and when she sat up in state after supper to think she began to repeat them again for she could think of nothing better or wiser to say but this was no wonder for all her thoughts put together made nothing but a cobweb after all and when the turk's head broom swept it with others from the roof toinette was no longer in the little chamber below she had died and bequeathed her cobweb wisdom to another generation but as it was only cobweb wisdom spiders remain spiders still and still weave their webs in the roofs of churches without fathoming the mystery of unseen presences below end of cobwebs Recording by Bill Mosley, Bernardo, Texas, USA.